Okay. Good Hi. evening. Good evening. I'm Nancy Lloyd, a resident of Longwood. Um, a retired National Board Certified Teacher with SCPS and um, a parent of SCPS graduates and a grandparent of uh, SCPS students. I'm speaking to you tonight regarding the slippery slope we find ourselves on regarding the sexualization of our youth. Many parents believe this is better discussed and taught in the home while other parents disagree. However, the principal of Lyman High School has approved yearbook content this year that crosses a line. Once you put a focus on sexual habits and types of sexual attractions, you are sexualizing minors. Order. These, these conversations belong in the home not in a public taxpayer supported school and definitely not in a published yearbook. If someone were to walk up to a minor on the street and start talking about sexual attractions, it would be an inappropriate conversation. So what line are we willing to draw? Do we want our schools to get caught up in the current social and political controversies? Or do we want to rise above it and focus on growing the next generation of strong competitors in a global workforce? It's time to draw a solid line as to what our society will accept as appropriate to be promoted by our publicly funded schools. Lyman is nationally known for its strong STEM program. The classroom and certainly yearbook are not places for political and social controversies. Classrooms need to motivate, time has encourage, expired. challenge, Your time has expired. and nurture Please all provide students. Order. 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 Good afternoon, my name is Michael Sherino. I wanna read you an excerpt from an article of a situation that took place at a school district in Washington. An elementary school offered inappropriate sex ed lessons to students without parental consent or district approval, according to concerned parents and a community activist. Parents only found out about it after finding the lesson plans from their kids, not the school. Fourth and fifth graders at Lincoln Elementary in the Olympia School District received sex education lessons on May 9th. Parents said the school told them that the lessons were district approved, but students were given unapproved lesson plans. Materials presented by Planned Parenthood included drawings of pubic hair shaped like an animal, and students were told they could pick from a number of contrived genders to identify as. Some of the materials promoted medication to block puberty. Now I know that the LGBTQ section in the Lyman High School yearbook is nowhere near as graphic as what I just read, but this still reinforces a slippery slope that people have talked about for years. Gender ideology has zero place in our K-12 schools in any capacity, and to conflate being against gender ideology with being against wanting children to feel safe and heard in their schools is wrong. Gender ideology is vastly inappropriate for school settings, which does have potential long-term ramifications down the road for a child, and conversations should only be had with their parent. Members of the board, you are elected to uphold educational standards in the state of Florida. We expect you to do just that going into the next school year. Please focus on sticking to age-appropriate content and core curriculum subjects. There will continue to be consequences if not upheld. Thank you. Order. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, order please. Hello, Belinda Ewan. There is an idea that the yearbook is protected by the First Amendment, specifically freedom of speech and freedom of the press. On a personal platform, yes. In a school-sponsored publication, no. Yearbooks are school-sponsored publications. They are not public forums. Yearbook students, staff, and administration do not have carte blanche. That means that some speech is prohibited. That includes speech that is likely to cause a substantial disruption, interferes with school activities and the education process, and that which does not align with the Florida statutes, including defining different types of sexual attractions in a two-page spread of a school-sponsored yearbook. The yearbook is created 
is a credited class, therefore it must adhere to the Florida statutes. While students may address matters of interest, it is still a school-sponsored publication wherein both the content and the style are subject to regulations. Your policy, requi your policy requires all SCPS publications and media be systematically reviewed and restricted when necessary, adhering to those standards. There are many types of sexual desires and attractions, but this is not your personal publication or forum. It is a school-sponsored publication and the law pertains to everyone. There is a video circulating of the student editor and the principal receiving an award for the controversy last year. They came back this year for round two, literally disregarding the Florida statures. Boundaries exist, laws exist, minors, students lack judgment, while the yearbook class is overseen by teachers and administrators who lack prudence. While the yearbook and, and, and Order, intentionally please. disregarding and rejecting Florida statues, treating it like a public, a private platform, using the school mascot and yearbook for the sole purpose of endorsing politics of a school-sponsored publication. Do you intend to protect and uphold the law Your concerning the expired. SCPS publications, Order. including yearbooks Order. and Your media? Your time has expired. Order. Let's take a five minute break. Hi, my name is Sharman Krapp. For the second year in a row, the yearbook committee staff and the principal at Lyman High School thought it was appropriate to publish the high school yearbook with controversial political content, which violates SCPS policy. This is, this is, excuse me, this year, a two-page spread that includes a glossary of different sexual preferences and their definitions were listed, along with a section praising the use of pronouns and our own school mascot carrying the pride flag. The principal reviewed this and still thought it was appropriate for minors to see. For the second time, he has approved of not only controversial content, but content that specifically violates SCPS policy. I'm requesting that the board take disciplinary action for that negligence. Parents paid for a yearbook not realizing that it would have a full page spread of sexual definitions. Regardless of how you or I view it, the content violates SCPS policy as well as Florida Sunshine State laws. It contains mature content that shouldn't be covered in a, Lyman, in a high school yearbook. It has nothing to do with Lyman High School's campus, curriculum, sports, or activities. This isn't about a group of individuals. I don't hate anybody. I don't want anyone erased or silenced. Order, ladies and gentlemen. This is about policy and laws that are already in place. A school yearbook just isn't the place for political propaganda, ideological agendas, or any other type of indo indoctrination, whether it's um, political, sexual, or religious. Our tax dollars pay for our children to have an academic education. And there is approved health curriculum that teaches abstinence. I'm not sure if people know that. Or order. Um, the information in this year's yearbook sends a very clear message that Lyman approves and promotes of all types of se sexual promiscuity, and I just think that's unacceptable. All right, I knew that would cause Order. some giggles. The yearbook is a place to recognize clubs, sports, and achievements. These, these pages were not labeled as being a part of any specific club, sport, or academic achievement or event. Or Order. It's solely informational and political and, and ideological in nature. Time, please. Ladies and gentlemen, just to a reminder, the microphones will be cut at two minutes. You have a two minute time limit and please be respectful. Thank you. Michelle. We can all agree we want every student to feel loved and understood. The high school years can be some of the most difficult in all of life. Clubs give students a sense of belonging, and the yearbook should include equal coverage and attention to all clubs. Not wanting an entire page devoted to defining various LGBTQ identities is not about canceling or bashing gay or trans people. It's about schools encouraging the sexualization of minors. The number of individuals seeking treatments for gender identity and related issues has increased dramatically in recent years. 
The rates of identifying as non-binary appear linked to the abundance of local cultural enthusiasm as seen in the data, tremendous spikes in certain regions, far beyond what most social scientists feel is enduring. In other words, some of the identification is merely transitory and temporary. Zeal for providing unflinching support and affirmation of those with a transgender or related identity has created an environment that can be very attractive to young people, especially those who are troubled or feel isolated. The attraction may be especially great for teens who are seeking support, affirmation, belonging, and a ready-made explanation for the social and psychological struggles that are common during this period of life. The demolition of guardrails that protected against unnecessary treatments and surgeries in the past means some currently unknown percentage of these adolescents and young adults who are being drawn to the trans and related identities will undergo unnecessary and harmful medical treatments. We are already witnessing an increase in detransitioning and regret. Many detransitioners are speaking out about their great regret at undergoing life-altering changes at ages they could not fully comprehend the impact of their choices. Although a zealous affirmation of young people's identities may seem a moral good, it has a real and sometimes devastating cost. One sensible safeguard is not to flood adolescents with sexual content everywhere they turn, such as the yearbook. There are many places interested young people can access information of this nature. The school and your year time has been... Thank you. Thank you. Leslie, Whew. thank you. Tough crowd. Hello. Good evening. My name is Leslie Kirschenbaum, and I am a Seminole County parent here. In the famous words of Katy Perry, I kissed the girl, and I liked it a lot. Order, um, please. Was, was that too much? Uh, inappropriate to say in a school board meeting? Most likely, yeah. And that's exactly how parents and children felt when they opened their Lyman High School yearbook for the first time and saw a two-page spread dedicated to definitions of different types of sexual orientations the LGBT community identify as. That is 100% inappropriate for public schools. I get it. Bad press is good press, and it's Pride Month, so why not dazzle the masses with a good spin? You want to make it look like a fascist, bigot, religious issue that same parents have with the inappropriateness of Lyman's two-page spread of sexual content. If I may, I'd like to refer to the 1988 Supreme Court Hazelwood School District versus Kuhlmeyer. There are lawyers present and that are sitting on the board that should be versed on this case. If not, Long story short, Please. the Supreme Court handed down a 5-3 decision in favor of the school. This case set a precedent that public schools do not have to allow students to include speech that's not within the educational mission. As a result, students should be made aware from the beginning that any publication under the purview of the school is subject to this ruling. This means that any sexual content being included or implied in a school publication can be denied. Students need to know that their freedom of speech is limited when it comes to submissions to the yearbook or other publications so they can adjust their content accordingly. The Lyman Yearbook Committee's goal of educating the masses on issues of human sexuality is inconsistent with the Florida Department of Education and Seminole County Public Schools Education Mission and state law. The speech and educational content is illegal under Florida law. The teacher and administrator should have refused to allow this to go to prison. Time has Save expired. Thank you. Hi, Valerie Wirtz. Okay. Thank you. You have time. Thank you. We live within the law determined by those who we elect to represent us. If the policies and laws are to be challenged, they must be done so in the legal way. We cannot have school staff and administration using their positions in our communities to challenge Florida law. Our students are not political pawns. I'm officially calling for the termination of the principal at Lyman High School for his Order, gross please. misconduct and the pattern of defying Florida law when it comes to education standards. He is holding to follow those standards. The principal has violated not only the law, but the trust of this community when entrusting him with our students. The State Board of Education voted to bar Florida middle school and high school teachers from intentionally teaching students about sexual orientation and gender identity unless the lessons are part of the reproductive health courses that are expressly required by the state's academic standards. Teachers who do so 
and otherwise could be suspended and lose their license. The state standards according to the Florida DOE website are very clear and they include family life, nutrition, personal health, prevention and, and control of diseases, as well as several more. They also instruct that kit grades 6 through 12 are awareness of the benefits of sexual abstinence in the ex as expected in the standards of the Florida law. Florida State Statute 48-1003.42 states that public schools must teach comprehensive health education that is giving the students an awareness of the benefits of sexual abstinence as expected standards and the consequences of teenage pregnancy. When we made a decision at Lyman High School to publish definitions, we made a decision to make it an educational tool. This is against the Florida statutes. It is against our policies and it is against our law. Your time has expired. Thank, Thank you. you. Yana, followed by Richard, followed by Kristen. Well, I'm Richard Dickinson. No CPS officer or employee shall use his or her official position in any way to influence or attempt to influence students to support or oppose any candidate, party, or issue. Such prohib prohibition shall include, but not be limited to, any form of advocacy or opposition in a classroom or school setting or other school-related student-teacher relationship. No SCPS officer or employee shall participate in any political activity while on duty unless such participation involves passive political expressions which are totally unrelated to the performance of his or her assigned duties and not otherwise prohibited herein, such as a bumper sticker on the employee's car. No SCPS employee shall attempt either directly or indirectly to coerce political activity or political support from any other employee or student. The following forms of political activity shall be prohibited by, at all times on school property. Distribution of campaign materials, including cards, brochures, and other items defined by law as political advertising to students or employees. Political signs are prohibited whether placed in or in the building or elsewhere on the board property, including board-owned vehicles. Basically, SCPS employees are prohibited by law from using SCPS yearbooks as campaign vehicles for their personal political causes. SCPS employees are supposed to check their personal politics at the door when they come to work and are supposed to remain politically neutral at all times while performing SCPS duties. SCPS yearbooks are supposed to be politically, sexually, and religiously neutral G-rated publications. Sir, your time, time has expired. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to leave your notes with the clerk, they can be part of the record. Order, please. Order. Kristen Bruno, followed by Monty Floyd, followed by Sarah Ward. How many minutes do I have? Only two? What's that? Okay, then. I got a lot of stuff written down. Um, we'll see. We, Order, to... please. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Can you hear me out there? Okay. You're speaking to the board. I understand, but I also have to talk to my homosexual friends out there as well. I'm talking to everybody. Sir, please direct. I am. I, I am. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have any openly homosexual people on the board? Please. Hands. Okay. It's a monologue. Go ahead, do it. Okay. Please don't be affected by a lot of activists in the group. They're not representative of the gay community. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're paid off. I don't know what they're doing here, but um, 
Most of us would be out working, home, maybe having a glass of wine, chilling. Uh, the, the victimization card is being played. I, I swear to God, it's like a repeat every time I come here. Victim, victim, victim. No. Uh, straight people do not hate gay people, okay? And if, uh, if there's a semblance of that, it's very possible, and it has nothing to do with being gay. They might need to see a therapist about it. The victim card, you're following what I'm saying, right? I'm hearing victim this, victim that. Order, please. Anyone Allow could become a victim speak. at any time if they want to, especially in their mind, right? I facilitated trans groups over 20 years ago, and um, a lot of things have changed. These young people do not understand the change and how glad they should be to live in America and not in another country. Um, okay, I'll, that's, uh, that's that. The Lyman High School guy, I give him credit. He said it all in a nutshell. Uh, it wasn't about the yearbook, it's about the publicity and there's no such thing as bad publicity. So. They won that one by putting that crap out in the book. Um, as far as school, I'm an engineer. I have a couple of degrees. And my experience talking to teachers, um, reading, writing, arithmetic. Your time has expired. Thank, Thank you. you. Would you please restate your name? I'm not sure I have the right. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I never get any applause. Your time has expired. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Order, please. Monty Floyd, followed by Sarah Ward, followed by David Kay. David Kay. Good evening. Am I ready to go? Ready to go. Okay. All right. First off, let's cut the gaslighting in the room tonight. The issue with the Lyman yearbook stems from a violation of district policy which prohibits proclamations. And come July 1st, something like this will also violate state law. So this board needs to act on it appropriately. As educators, you took an oath to not impose your own polit politics, religion, or sexual preferences with your students. In short, you took an oath to not groom, indoctrinate, or peddle whatever made up phrase you like to use and cooked up to justify the sexualization of children. It is not acceptable to discuss sexual preferences with minors. That's not journalism. That is pushing an agenda which violates policy and the oath the staff at this school took. Would this board be okay with the addition of a straight heterosexual two-page section in the yearbook to discuss heterosexual preferences with minors? I don't think so. You know why? Sure, because please, we don't promote the discussion of sexual preferences with kids because it's sick to talk about it with them. Stop using children as political cannon fodder to peddle your woke agendas. I don't care what you do in your personal life, but leave our kids out of it. In Florida, we do not indoctrinate, we educate. We Order, are joyful please. warriors and we will fight like hell with a smile on our face to protect our kids, parental rights, good teachers who are being silenced by the union and others, and the fight for the future of our country. Have a good night. Board, do something about what's happening in this room as well. Unacceptable. Order. Order, please. My name is Joy Stricker. I live in Longwood. For the first time in 15 years, I'm no longer an SCPS parent. I'm glad that Lyman created an LGBTQ yearbook spread with lots of definitions that the teacher in charge thought were important. Terms like LGBTQ and sexual orientation and gender identity and lesbian and gay and bisexual and queer and gender fluid and transgender and cisgender and non-binary and pansexual and asexual and last but not least, aromantic. Now I get to tell the adults in the room some definitions. A groomer is someone who builds a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child or young person so they can manipulate, exploit, and abuse them. A pedophile is a person who is sexually attracted to children. School choice is a term for education options that allow students and families to select alternatives to public school. 
Homeschool means to educate one's child at home instead of sending them to a school. Most high school students are minors. They can't purchase alcohol or cigarettes or cough medicine. Yet every time I blink my eyes, somebody's trying to indoctrinate our children with the pride agenda or the transgender agenda. I believe in preserving the innocence of children for as long as possible. This does not make me a homophobe, contrary to the beliefs of the liberal left. Now, I will use all those definitions I already gave you in a sentence. I hope that parents pull their children out of SCPS and consider school choice or homeschool options because there are too many groomers and pedophiles working here. Order. In conclusion, they, them is derived from Satan and demons. Order. Order, sir. It originates from, my name is Legion, for we are many. Another fun fact is that Baphomet is a transgender satanic deity. Teachers who push pronouns in the sexualization of children are not just enabling the mental illness of gender dysphoria. They are unintentionally supporting a satanic Your time has expired. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your time has expired. Thank you. If you'd like to leave your notes with the clerk. Now, now you can hear me. Good evening, all. Wow, wow, wow. It has been very interesting this evening. And I'm not surprised with the things that are occurring in Lyman High School. I can tell you firsthand. And by the way, to you all, Moms for Liberty group is not a hate group. Okay? Order. I can tell Allow you her to firsthand speak. as well. I highly suggest Salmon County Public School to include the following terms and definitions in all future yearbooks. Bullying, discrimination, retaliation, gaslighting, denial of faith. It's not the school's mission to groom or promote alternative lifestyles, but to just provide all students, all students, including LGBTQ, ESC students, all of them, the appropriate education required by the law. How difficult is that? All students. By the way, Emily's graduation photo and baby photos were omitted from her year yearbook. Perhaps that was done intentionally due to retaliation against this mom over here for advocating for her. I'm sure it was. Protect all kids, ESE kids, LGBT kids, all kids, please. And Moms for Liberty group, thanks to them for supporting me instead of you guys that were supposed to be supporting my special needs child. Thank you. Order, please. Jessica Tillman, followed by Stephen Cornea, followed by Kyle Moore, I think. Good evening. I'm Jessica Tillman. It is disappointing that a yearbook advisor created a controversial yearbook yet again. It is highly inappropriate to put definitions of gender identities in a yearbook. This violates sunshine laws and makes it sound like glorifying and normalizing being promiscuous. For students in grades 6 through 12, awareness of benefits of sexual abstinence as, as the expected standard and the consequence of teenage pregnancy. Are we no longer teaching two genders in biology class? This, this is in the calendar section and is under October for LGBTQ plus history month, which is a proclamation and last board discussion on this topic, we should not do proclamations. So the board stance is no proclamations, yet a teacher is allowed to make proclamations. I, am, I also noticed that they have uh, a page for Black History Month, but no other group was re represented. Why? No Hispanic Heritage Month, no Nuclear Family Month, no Autism Awareness Month. I agree we should not be doing proclamations. We should be unifying our students, not dividing and marginalizing them. Why wasn't the GSA club listed in the club section? There are quite a number of quotes all, all over the book by many different students and were not questioned. 
This was in a yearbook class and must follow education standards. Nobody is calling this group names. Nobody is saying this group does not exist. We want all kids supported, and if they need extra resources, please provide them. Thank you. Thank you.